Hi there, my name is Pat Murdy and I'm a PhD student in the Group of Seismology and Wave Physics at ETH Zurich. So I'm going to be giving you a quick overview on a paper I recently presented at the 2021 SPIE Medical Imaging Conference, where we take a closer look at taking some of the computational techniques developed in the field of seismology and applying them to try and image the human brain using ultrasound. So this is a project that I've been collaborating on together with my co-authors Christian Böhm and Andreas Fichner, and I'm going to be highlighting some of the key points of this study here. There are a lot of parallels between the types of physics that we use in seismology problems within geophysics and ultrasound problems in medical imaging. So in transcranial ultrasound imaging, we run into a lot of the same issues that we run into in subsalt imaging, which is a pretty common imaging problem within hydrocarbon exploration. So in both these kinds of systems, we have two low velocity layers that are separated by a single high velocity layer. So this high velocity layer acts as a pretty strong reflector and makes it much more difficult to try and resolve the materials that are on the other side of it. Another fairly significant complication that's introduced by the presence of the skull are the so-called acoustic elastic coupling effects that we get at the tissue skull interface. Now these are some effects that we get when we have sound waves that travel from a fluid or so-called acoustic medium to a solid or so-called elastic medium. So in this example, we have two relatively simplistic ellipse-shaped skulls where the skull on the left-hand side behaves as a fluid or so-called acoustic medium, whereas the one on the right behaves as a solid or so-called elastic medium. So we've modeled the forward wave fields here using the spectral element method, which is a pretty common numerical framework used in global scale seismology problems. We get pretty similar results in both cases for the primary transmitted and reflected wavefronts for low incidence angles, but the secondary arrivals are quite a bit stronger in the case where we consider an elastic skull. We can do the same thing for a more realistic brain phantom, again considering an acoustic skull on the left and an elastic skull on the right. So overall, we get pretty similar results to the previous case, so again, here we have relatively similar primary transmitted and reflected wavefronts between the two cases, while our secondary arrivals are again quite a bit stronger in the case where we consider an elastic skull. So here we use these wave field modeling techniques in our full waveform version scheme. So the general idea of what we're trying to accomplish here is that we start off with some initial guess of what the brain tissue looks like, as we can see here on the left-hand side, and then we iteratively update this model to gradually improve the fit between our synthetic data and our observed data. If all goes according to plan, we'll hopefully be able to incrementally improve our inverted model until it resembles our true model, which I've shown for reference here on the right-hand side. So we can see here that we iteratively update our initial guess to converge to a more meaningful reconstruction that gradually approaches our true model. We'll of course never converge to a perfect solution, but our final reconstruction gives us a pretty good idea of the major tissue structures within the brain. So if you'd be interested in learning more about this study, definitely check out our full presentation and the accompanying conference paper on the SPIE website, and links will be in the description below. Thanks for watching.